Lee Merritt, Democratic candidate for Texas Attorney General. Thank you so much. Uh, right now, so far, you're in third place, trailing Joe Jaworski by about 1,400 votes. You say this is not over yet. Talk to me about that. Well, as you know, there are votes still being counted. This was an unusual election. Not only did we see historic low voter turnout as a result of the, the provisions of SB1, the Republican voter suppression law, uh, but we saw the consequences of that early on. We saw mail-in rejection uh, rates for ballots in Harris County at almost 40%. Statewide, we saw about 30% in, um, in industrial areas. Uh, that's up from 1% last year. And so there are provisional ballots to be counted. There are mail-in ballots to be counted that were rejected, ballots that need to be cured. There are out-of-state ballots, military ballots. We estimate over 50,000 ballots still in this race that's down to, at least for the second, between second and third, uh, down to less than 1,400 votes. Um, so are you saying that you believe there are still 50,000 votes out there, whether they are overseas ballots or ballots that need to be cured to come in, that could put you in second place, perhaps? I know of, uh, since February 18th, the New York Times reported that there have been 15,000 mail-in ballots rejected in, in between Harris County and Dallas County alone. And that is before March 1st, uh, the, the, the day of voting. And they expected a surge on that day because most people wait for closer to election day to, 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 to submit those ballots. And so, yes, we know that there are tens of thousands of ballots being counted right now. It's the reason that no one has called the election yet, because we're down to less than 1,400 ballots between uh, Mr. Jaworski and I, and there's still a substantial amount of ballots to be counted. And will you request a recount? Uh, and what, what are the rules? with regards to that as far as the Texas Democratic Party is concerned? I, I don't know that we, we first need to complete the initial count before we see who's requesting a recount. Uh, you know, I imagine that if the numbers come out in my favor, uh, then I won't be requesting a recount. Uh, and if they come out in Mr. Jorsky's, uh, against Mr. Jorsky, his cat may consider that. Uh, but right now, we just wanna make sure that every uh, ballot eligible ballot that has been cast in the election that's initially counted. Should you make the runoff, uh, what will your priority issues be? It's still voter protection, and it's been made uh, particularly clear here in the primary. Less than a million Texans um, participate in the Democratic uh, primary election. The Republicans are bragging right now of record uh, turnout for their primaries. While they're calling it a red wave, and what it's more accurately uh, term voter suppression. That, that's what we see happening at the polls. And we want to be responsive to it. We have to be responsive to it now because it will be a train wreck come November. If we don't deal with 40% mail-in ballot rejection rates, if we don't deal with uh, the long lines and, and inefficiency at the polls that we saw, the hostile environments we often saw at a lower level during the primary because it was such low voter turnouts. But We've heard countless stories of Democrats who were turned away, say their Democratic machines weren't working, um, and that you know the polls were often hostile to Democratic voters. We need to we need to cure those issues right now. And well, what are you doing about the fact that because people have until March seventh to correct their ballots, their mail-in ballots, or or provisional ballots as well? Yeah. Um, so what are you doing to get that message out there? So we're making phone calls directly uh, to voters who have rejected mail-in ballots. We are able to have some access to that through our van equipment. We're encouraging others uh, with, the, uh, with various organizing projects across the state, including our sponsors with the Texas Organizing Projects, our endorsers, I should say. Uh, and we're committing manpower to calling the electorate and getting them to make sure that they are aware of their right to correct their ballot and that they, they understand that the deadline is on Monday. And we continue to work with leadership like uh, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee uh, to look for ways to improve the election process come the May runoff or come the November election. The integrity of both of those elections should be really important to Democrats across the state, seeing what we had already encountered at, in this uh, early primary. And as far as, as that is concerned, are you working with the Texas Democratic Party to have them address some of these concerns? 
Absolutely. We've had conversations with leadership within the Texas Democratic Party. We've started conversations with the Department of Justice. Again, weeks ago, when we saw the abnormal amount of uh, ballots being rejected in some of our key urban areas. Uh, we continue the conversations with, with uh, Commissioner Rodney Ellis and uh, Representative Sheila Jackson Lee and everyone who is vested in having safe, secure, and highly participated in elections. Let me ask you about something that I read that Judge Mike Fields, one of uh, your primary opponents, uh, suggested that all the Democrats in this race uh, avoid a runoff and get behind Rochelle Garza. What, what's your reaction when you heard about that? I, I, I thought it came from a good place. The idea is that we want to maximize our power within the Democratic Party. But understanding that vote record low voter participation will not allow us to maximize our power. If anything, we take this opportunity where, you know, there's a lot of energy involved in the race as we approach uh, such, uh, such thin margins. And we draw attention to the voter suppression taking place in Texas. I've worked with PSAs with Kelly Rowland's team who just released uh, concerns about voter suppression. I've worked with uh, national leadership. I've worked with the, you know, former uh, presidential candidate, Senator Bernie, Bernie Sanders to do all that we can to draw attention to what's going on in Texas, because this is just the test balloon for dozens of states uh, throughout the country who have passed similar voter suppression laws. And we get to see the impact now, so we need to begin to respond to it. And my last question to you uh, is, if you are in the runoff, how will you get your vo voters to the polls? Because typically what we've seen is these primary runoffs, far fewer people go out and vote. And so how will you motivate your supporters to go to the polls? Again, it's sounding the alarm around the extraordinary uh, things that have been done by the Republican Party to keep us away from the polls and using that as motivation for our base. If we're going to win Texas statewide, we're going to have to engage non-traditional voters. We're going to have to engage voters under 30. Uh, we're going to have to educate the public about the process and what's going on. That's what our campaign has already has always been about. Uh, that, that's why we've had over 10,000 non-traditional donors, small dollar donors given to our campaign. Uh, which is more than any other candidate involved in the race. Uh, this is a people-powered movement and taking this message directly to people. Um, and and I, we're, we're hoping that what's going on now is going to be a wake-up call. And we have to engage uh, the voters in every way possible. We're, we're, losing is not an option. Uh, seating this election season over to a Republican Party that intentionally suppressed our vote uh, is cannot be an option. It's, it is on us literally to stand up and fight back. Lee Merritt, Democratic candidate for Texas Attorney General, thank you so much. We appreciate your time today. Thank you.